Hey everyone, welcome to another masterclass. In this episode, we are going to be diving into search engine optimization. And we're going to be looking at the specifics of how you can optimize your on-page content that's on your website through the Arrow Website Manager to get better search engine rankings. We'll also dive into Google Search Console. We'll explain what it is, how you can set it up and how to use it to improve your rankings. And then we'll dive into Google My Business as well, which is a bit of a bonus topic, uh, something that's often overlooked by a lot of business owners and agents. Um, but it plays a pivotal role in your business coming up first on Google Search Engine, on the Google Search Engine, when someone's looking for a real estate agent in a specific suburb. Um, and there's some simple things that you can do to your profile that are going to help you get better rankings and come up in that top three or four slot that is really important when, uh, when it comes to Google Maps. Okay, so let's dive into it. Why optimize your website? Uh, it's a simple question. It's one that um, I think a lot of people would go, the default response would be, well, to get better rankings. Okay, and that's obvious. But what can those rankings actually do for your business? Okay. First and foremost, uh, they can increase conversions, okay? It's more, you're, if your website is ranking better and you're showing up higher on Google, it's more likely that you're gonna get better conversions from your website, okay? It's gonna improve your brand visibility. If people are looking for a, a real estate agent in that specific suburb, you're more likely to come up and be front and center. It's not the be all to end all to getting listings, but that extra visibility through the Google search engine can sometimes make the difference between getting or not getting a phone call. Uh, it's obviously gonna increase traffic. We're gonna get more people clicking on our website, more people looking at our website, and those traffic numbers are gonna go up. Uh, and you're gonna get boosted brand reputation. If people are seeing your website more often when they're looking through Google search, even if they're not at the position in the position to actually inquire and start to talk to an agent just yet the reputation that you have because you're always in their face you're always front and center when they do try to engage with a real estate agent or they're looking for whether it be market updates or some details on the local area or looking to browse recent sales or maybe just poking around at a few agents if you're constantly and consistently showing up in front of them then your reputation is improving okay Let's dive into some of the nitty gritty. Uh, first thing is meta titles and descriptions. Okay, what is a meta title and description? Put simply, it is the heading and description that shows when your website is viewed in Google. Okay, uh, 10, 15 years ago, this was really important when it came to your actual rankings and it was played a massive role in whether or not you ranked or not. It still plays a role, but it's a very small role. The way you need to think about these two things now is they are advertising text, okay? It's one thing to rank well, it's another to actually have people clicking on your website, alrighty? If we've got a really boring title like Noosa Estate Agents with a description of Noosa Estate Agents, it doesn't look as enticing as the example you can see up the top here where we've got Noosa Real Estate Experts over 15 years local experience and then we've got a nice well thought out description that summarizes my business, okay? That's more likely to get clicks. We're still using our target suburb and our target area in our description, so it's written well when it comes to actually uh, rankings and, 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 and showing Google that we've got a, um, a focused website that's focusing on that local target market, which is Noosa in this case but it's also written well from a marketing standpoint. It's gonna get the message across. Someone that comes across that in a search for Noosa real estate agents is more likely to click on the top example than the second example, okay? How to write metadata in the Arrow Website Manager. What I'm gonna do for this is I'm actually gonna drag another window onto the screen and it should look familiar. We're logged into the Arrow application. Now I've skipped forward a few steps. I've gone into the website manager, which you can access via the setup menu up here. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through how you can actually put your metadata into your website and start to customize this on a per page basis, okay? So we've got a couple options. Firstly, we can go into site settings up the top and we have a whole bunch of options in here, okay? We've got our website name, title, description, and keywords, 
All right, what we're talking about today is our title and description. Name is just what it shows us inside the Arrow app. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my title, which I'm copying from my other screen over here, and I'm gonna paste it into the title field, and then I'm gonna grab that description, which is the same description you saw in that example I gave you on that last screen, and I'm gonna paste that into the title and description, okay? Once I've done that, I click Save, and that's saved for my site. Now what I've done there by going to Site Settings and putting my title and description is I have set my default title and description. That is the title and description that is gonna be used on all pages if the page does not have a title and description, okay? Now, to edit the title and description or the metadata for an individual page, we come back to pages, we find the page that we wanna modify by just searching for it or browsing in this list, and we go ahead and click on settings. And in here, you're gonna notice that we have some similar fields. We have title and description, okay? And what we can do is we can paste in or we can type in our title and description for that specific page. Now, general rule of thumb with metadata and these titles and descriptions is you don't wanna just run with the same title and description on every page, okay? You're better off having something in there than nothing, but you don't wanna have every single one of your pages on your website as the same title and description because it's not actually descriptive of what is on that page and Google recognizes that and they're not gonna rank it well. Okay, because it's not a great experience for their users to have all of your pages across your entire website with the same details. Okay, so it's really important that you don't just come in here and just whack in the same details on all your pages. Okay, so that's my title that I brought in from my other page um, from my default settings on the home page. I would put that in. Okay, so you'll see me paste that in here because this is our main page and we're going to run with our main title and description. So I'll save that. But then I wouldn't put that on, say, my buy page that has all my listings, okay? Uh, what do we got? It's called residential in this site. So we've got a residential sales page. I'm not gonna just go and put on a title that says Noosa Real Estate Experts over 15 years experience. We're gonna do something a little bit more specific to this actual page that we're talking about here. Okay, so we've got listings. So we're gonna type something like browse listings for sale in the Noosa area. And then if we want, we can tack on our brand name on the end, Noosa Estate Agents. Okay, and then same deal in description. We don't wanna just run with our generic description or our default description that we've just put in our site. That's just for the, that's just a fallback for pages that we haven't gone and put the effort in to write this. Um, so we'd type something specific to this page, okay? I'm not gonna put that in just now, just for the sake of moving through this, uh, but I'll go ahead and click save. And then what we can do is we can quickly jump into our homepage. So if we just come down to home, click on this little icon here, that's gonna preview uh, that page, you'll see that we've got our title up the top. You can see that in that little tab up the, in the top of the screen there, okay? So that's saved successfully on that page. Uh, and we now have a title that Google, the next time they come around and crawl our website, which can take sort of, you know, three to 10 days, depending on your website's traffic and all sorts of other things. Um, the next time they crawl it, they're gonna pick up on that title. It's gonna re-index with those details, that title and description in the Google search engine so that the next time someone comes across your website, they see it in that list of all the other websites that they're looking at. Yours is gonna have that new title and description. It's gonna really stand out and hopefully get that click. And then from there, they browse your website and hopefully they give you a call or send you an email. That's the end goal. Um, all right, let's uh, move on. Um, we're gonna come back to this slideshow over here and we're gonna move into some content. Um, so just wanna talk a little bit about the content on your website uh, and how you can optimize that content for better search engine rankings as well, okay? 
it's even more important than those meta details, the title and description, because this is the actual meat of your website. It's the stuff that's actually relaying your message. It's what the user actually sees. The user doesn't see the metadata and the title and description after they click on your website from Google. Um, they see this content. And the content that's on your website is how Google determines that you are in fact an expert in your field and you should be shown for the keywords that you are trying to show for. Okay, so a couple, uh, a few must have pages on your website. Okay, and these are pages that we really try to emphasize the importance of with all of our customers. Um, they do require a little bit of effort on your part to set up and put the information in, but they're gonna, you, you're really gonna reap the rewards if you put the time in for these pages. Okay, first one is reviews. All right, um, content from legitimate customers. Uh, that have said something about your service, that have hopefully talked about the location that you're in, where you're operating, all that kind of stuff, um, is gold when it comes to SEO. It's fantastic. It's not just the generic cookie cutter content that you've probably got on your website, which is written in a similar tone and, um, and, and, and sounds like your business or your website. It's authentic content from customers. It's, it's variance from what you've got on the rest of your site. Um, the more content or the more reviews you can have where they do talk about your location, they talk about specific people in your business, um, what you did, that kind of stuff, um, the better. And if you can get those reviews linking back to the property that you either that they either purchased or sold through you, it's even better again because it's more location content on your website. Uh, there was a there was an update uh, about a few months ago from when I'm filming this uh, masterclass that gave you exactly that within the arrow system so you can go into your reviews or your testimonials within arrow and you can actually correlate them to the listing for that review or that transaction and then it will all show on your website and it'll all tie together beautifully and that's a a massive benefit for seo okay uh the next must have page for your website is a bit of a group of pages it's service pages okay um so we're talking about ideally a key landing page for your sell, selling service and your property management service if you do do rentals. Um, these are the pages that are going to talk about your points of difference, your USPs, the things that customers um, should be reading if they're contemplating engaging with you. Um, this content is, it, the reason this is really valuable other than getting your message across and your point of, point of difference across is that if someone's looking at engaging with you, this is the type of content that they're going to really sink their teeth into. They're going to start reading, they're going to look at, and they're going to get a feel for it. And what that does is it increases time on your site because they're reading that content and they're absorbing that content. Google loves to see um, uh, customers or website visitors spending more time on your website. If a client, if a customer has done a Google search for Noosa real estate agents, hypothetically, They've come across your website, they've clicked on it, and then Google sees that they've spent 5, 10, 15 minutes on your website absorbing that content. That sends a signal back to Google and basically says, hey, that content that we ranked on page one for Noosa real estate agents, it's fantastic because we've got more and more visitors spending time on that page, um, reading that content, absorbing that content. So we've got to rank this high. We've got to show this to more customers because they're loving it, right? That's why um, video is such an important thing as well on website because videos take time to watch, they take time to absorb. Um, and if you put videos on landing pages, it's typically gonna drive that time on page up. It's gonna reduce your bounce rate, which in turn gets relayed back to Google. They monitor that activity and you're more likely to start to see an improvement in rankings, okay? Bunch of other benefits that come from those sell and property management pages as well uh, when it comes to conversions and, and you know getting inquiries and appraisal requests and all that kind of stuff. So it's a win-win. Uh, lastly on this list is suburb slash area profiles. Okay, and this, um, this, is, this is an absolute must. This is content that really drills down on your target suburbs. Pretty much all, all of you will have uh, five, 10, 15 target suburbs that you focus on that you're constantly prospecting in. Um, that's your target farming area. You need to ideally put that on your website. You're a little bit spoilt for choice when it comes to focusing on your suburbs just because you have listings and you have recent sales and that's great content because it's list, these are listings in your target suburbs. It's listings in Noosa, in Sunshine Beach, all these suburbs in your target area, right? But 
you need to do a little bit more than that if you want to stand out from the pack. Okay, so you need to start to profile those suburbs a little bit. Start to put a description on there. Do a bit of a write-up on some local businesses in that suburb. Put some key content on there that talks about, you know, uh, highlights in the area. So, you know, there might be a really nice beach or a waterfall or a hike or something like that. Okay, this content here isn't typical. It's, it's less so for the visitor. Okay, which can make it a little hard to, you know, really focus on and get the time, make the time to do. It's it is really targeted content for better search engine rankings. Okay, Google loves to see targeted content about the thing that you're trying to rank for, right? So the more unique content, this is not cookie cutter content you've copied from the local information page or something. This is content that you've handwritten about your area. The more of this type of content that you can write on your website the more likely Google is to see that you're actively creating content, you're trying to educate customers on your local area through all these different types of content and the more likely they are to rank you well, okay? Okay, so next we are gonna move into the actual content of my website. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up an existing landing page that I have and I'm gonna take you through some changes that I would recommend making to that specific landing page. Now obviously, Every, every page is different. Your website's gonna be different. You're gonna have different content on your pages. So it's just an example of some of the things that you can do to better optimize that content and make it a little bit more likely to, to, to assist in ranking better, okay? We'll also try to improve the content from a, a, a readability standpoint as well to make it easily digestible via visitors because it's not just about rankings, it's also about getting conversions and getting your message across and and relaying your message to those visitors. Okay, if you've got traffic coming from Google but you've got a poor message on your website and people are bouncing back off that page, it's not doing your business any good. Yes, you can sit there and act it um, and, and be proud of the fact that you're ranking well but if it's not generating income and revenue and listings and appraisal requests then what good is it right so as you can see i've jumped into the arrow website manager again i'm just going to go and pull up my selling landing page so this is one of those pages that i realized just before that is a key page that you really should be looking to have on your website i'm going to go and click on edit and that's going to pull up the page within the arrow live editor um, so if I scroll down here, you'll see we've got some components on this page. Um, looks pretty nice. Definitely some room for some, for some improvement, okay? So I'm gonna take you through a few things here. So first thing, the content is pretty short. It's not very keyword rich, okay? So like this heading here really jumping out at me, we've got just why us, and then we've got a little description in here. There's very few mentions of the fact that we are a specialist in the Noosa market on this page, okay? And that's something that we really want to be consistent with. You want to be talking about your local area, about your suburbs, okay? Um, not only is that going to help with rankings, but it's also offering a lot of clarity to the visitor, going, okay, these guys are specialists in my local area, okay? You imagine if a homeowner in Noosa is looking at this page and you're talking about Noosa, about your experience in Noosa, re your results in Noosa, um, and you're constantly showing that content, it's also gonna really make it um, apparent to that visitor that that's your focus, um, your focus area and your target market, okay? So what I've done, I've typed up a little bit of copy on my other screen over here that you're gonna see me paste in, just so you don't have to wait for me to um, manually type everything. So I'll go ahead and paste that in. So we've got, we have been serving Noosa families for over 15 years, okay? So nice little little paragraph there, a uh, little heading there that, you know, is a little bit more descriptive than just why us. Um, what we can also do, because I know sometimes those, those headings like why us are great for sort of setting the tone for that section. We can still put why us up here and then I'll go ahead and just format that a little bit differently. We'll turn that into a, a heading six. And then we'll just gray that out just so it's got a different color. So, um, and then I might even just go and just so it's on theme with the rest of the site, we'll put that in there like that. Okay, so we've still got the, the little subheading setting the tone and, and, and providing a little bit of context for what this text is gonna talk about. And then we've got a nice 
optimized heading talks about a location also realize like a, a key point of difference we've been in the market we've been in the noosa market for over 15 years okay coming down the page we've got some more content here this uh this section here is a little bit sad um we definitely want to spruce that up a little so i'm gonna bring in some more copy and we're going to change that heading to we're a team of noosa locals so we're talking about the team here um, and I've also written a bit of a paragraph here that I'll bring in and we'll just go ahead and format that. We'll make that a heading two. You'll notice I'm using heading twos, not heading ones. It's really important that you only have a heading one at the top and once on your website, on, on your landing page. You don't want to be using that throughout the page. Um, Google sees these heading tags, so heading one, two, three, four, and so on. They see it as a bit of a hierarchy for your website. So um, the heading one is of most importance. Um, and it, it typically is at the top of the page. Not always, it can be moved around a little bit, but you do not want to have more than one on the actual landing page, okay? So we've got, a, an, again, a nice optimized heading in here. We're a team of Noosa Local, so we're talking about our team. You can see I've put a paragraph in here. Meet our exceptional team of real estate experts specializing in the vibrant Noosa region. So again, keyword rich content. We're talking about the location. We're talking about our target suburb. And then we've got a button that goes through to our team page. We've also got an image of our team over here. Nice little um, lifestyle shot of um, a few of our team members. Um, one important thing as well is image optimization. So um, when you're uploading your images into the editor, ideally you don't want to be uploading these big full HD images. Okay, you want to just shrink them down a little bit using whatever editing programs on your computer. Um, the ARA website manager will optimize them as well as it can, but if you're uploading these massive five, six meg images, it, it, it can only optimize them so far. So ideally, optimize them before you upload them. When you insert them into um, the page, one thing that's really important as well is putting an alt tag or a description on that image. So what I'm gonna do is just reinsert this image and I'll show you how to do that. So we're gonna click on insert image and the media manager is gonna load up. We'll come into our folder where we've got our images, which for me is in the website folder. Click on the image that you're wanting to insert and then this description field here is what fills in the, um, the alt tag. And we're going to put a description in that describes the actual image that's on the page. That's the most important thing here. We're not trying to put in fake keywords and that kind of thing. It's a descriptive piece of text for the image. Okay. And what that does is it adds context to the image. So Google sees that alt tag on the image and goes, hey, that's optimized as well. We're talking about Noosa. We're talking about the location. Um, those images will also show up um, in Google Images a lot better if you uh, start to optimize those images and, and improve the quality of those images, the file size, but also put this description tag on. If someone is on Google Images looking for Noosa real estate agents, Noosa staff, that kind of thing, chances are this image could rank more highly on that search. Now, it's not typically where you're going to get traffic from, but it's a little bonus thing. Um, it's more about optimizing your landing page for those main search rankings. Once we've put that description in, we just click insert and you'll see that'll load in there. And that's now got that description or alt text on it. Okay. Um, now, if we move down the page, we've got a nice call to action section in here. It's already pretty optimized. I'm not going to change anything here. What I might do though, is we'll just insert another section and we'll put some, we'll put some listings in. Okay. So all I did there was insert a row. And we're going to insert a text block here. So I click on insert section and click on text block. And then what we'll do, we'll put some text in there shortly, but we'll go ahead and insert a, another listing module in here. And we will just put our, we're just going to put our residential listings in for now. And we'll do it as a slider. And we'll see how that looks. Awesome. Got some of our more recent listings in there. And then we're just going to go and put in here. Uh, we'll just type, uh, we'll just go center and we'll go recently uh, listed in Noosa and surrounds. And then we'll go ahead and give that another heading. Go H3 this time further down the page. So a little bit lower in the, the heading hierarchy. 
and we'll just chuck a line break on that for some spacing. So uh, as you can see there, we've got another heading. We've got our suburb, our location mentioned in that heading, and then we've got a bunch of listings scrolling across here. Um, these are our most recent listings for this particular sample website. Um, this content too, because I am an expert in Noosa and I'm actively listing in Noosa, as you will be in your target suburb, this content's super optimized for my keywords that I'm, I'm aiming for. Because again, it's it's got content in it that's specific to my location. We've got a listing here in Noosa Heads, a listing here in Nooseville, a listing here in Tawanton, which is about two, three kilometers away from our target suburb. So it's all super relevant for this landing page and our website and our target keywords. That moves us on out of the website content side of things and into Google My Business. Um, and as I touched on briefly in the intro, uh, Google My Business, massively powerful tool when it comes to generating traffic for your website. It's one that's often overlooked. We see a lot of Google My Business profiles that are sort of a little half-assed when it comes to how they're set up. We don't have things like opening hours, categories, descriptions. There's rarely photos or posts put on them. And, and what that does is it, from Google's perspective, they see that as an incomplete profile. They see it as a profile that is likely, is unlikely to offer a good experience to the end user. And Google is all about offering a better, better experience to their visitors, okay? And you think about from a consumer standpoint, if you're looking for a restaurant in your area and you come across a restaurant that's got great reviews, it's got photos of the food, the menu, all that kind of stuff, you're more likely to click on it, okay? So Google goes, hey, this profile is complete. More people are clicking on it, push it to the top, okay? So what you need to do is you need to aim to get your Google My Business profile to that point. And there's a few things you can do to get that happening, okay? First thing, provide as much information as possible. So these are like, you can literally knock this up in 10, 15 minutes, jump into your Google My Business profile, go and edit the profile and start to fill out everything you possibly can. Okay, if there's a field for it and it makes sense for your business, fill it out. Okay, so description, opening hours, your social media profiles. So put your Facebook, your Insta, your LinkedIn links, all of that kind of stuff in there. Set your categories, okay? Do all of that kind of stuff. Um, there's a little stat here that we've got on this screen, um, which is um, really hits home. It's a complete, a completed Google My Business listing receives on average seven times more clicks than an incomplete one. Okay, and that's largely because they get ranked better, right? They're gonna rank higher in Google My Maps and it's more likely they're gonna get clicked if they're at the top. Um, Google My Business uh, and Google Maps um, is really big on highlighting that first three, four, five listings, depending on the device you're on and a few other variables. So if you can get into that, that group, it's more likely you're gonna get that traffic, potentially get that call, get that lead, get that appraisal request, okay? As you guys know, it's not the be all to end all, but it can be a difference in whether or not you get or don't get the call, okay? A um, Couple other things in Google My Business, uploading photos. Uh, you don't have to be as prolific as your Facebook and Instagram, but some photos really does help. Okay, and try to keep them legitimate, um, legitimate photos of your team out in the field, your signboards, your front office, actual listings, not your generic stocky photos. Okay, they stand out um, and they don't look authentic. Um, users pick up on them really quickly. Social media is about social interactions. You want it to look like actual interactions with your customers, with your listings, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, chances are you've probably got hundreds of photos you could easily whack in there. Go and put some in there. Try not to just do it once and then leave it for two years. I definitely recommend trying to just come in there and do it once a quarter, one, twice a year. Um, the more the better, but that's better than nothing, okay? Uh, last thing, don't forget the Google reviews. Everyone's great at getting reviews on REA and RMA and they're massively important. Uh, Google reviews also super important, okay? Uh, Google wants to see that you are interacting with customers and that they're reviewing you, okay? Particularly if they're good quality reviews, five-star reviews, okay? Um, bonus points, if you can get clients, sellers and buyers to mention your target suburbs in those reviews. Uh, again, it's just localized targeted content. It really proves to Google that you are an expert in your field and you're sitting here writing all this content about Noosa and how you're an expert in Noosa and then you've got reviews 
in your Google My Business profile also saying this agent's the best agent in Noosa. We listed our home in Noosa with XYZ agent and they got us a great result. That stuff there is just gold for your Google My Business rankings and it actually has a flow on effect with your website because your website and your Google My Business profile, they're linked together, right? Google knows that, they see that. That's a part of the setup process with Google My Business. So it has a flow on effect with your search engine rankings for your main website, okay? Lastly, I wanna move into Search Console. So Google Search Console is essentially your um, your admin panel for your account with Google Search Con- uh, with with Google Search Engine. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to take you through from start to finish how to do this because most, well, not most, but a lot of agents don't have this set up yet, um, and you're missing out on some opportunities there. Okay, you can't, you don't get visibility over errors on your website that happen from time to time, links get deleted, that kind of stuff. Um, You don't get visibility over search engine performance, what keywords are ranking, what ones aren't, that kind of stuff. Um, It also prohibits you from being able to send or submit your sitemap to Google. A bunch of other benefits as well that do get a little bit more technical, but it's just something that as um, as a business owner and as a website owner, you really just need to have. Think of it like uh, if you think about Yellow Pages back in the day or even if you have a Yellow Pages account um, on their website, uh, you have a login account to manage that. You can go in and you can tweak details and all that kind of stuff. And Google really is just a big directory of every website on the planet, right? So this is essentially your login to manage your listing on their directory, all right? So if you've got a website, you need to have Google Search Console, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are gonna go and we're gonna search for Search Console on the start at the beginning, and we're gonna click on Google Search Console Tools. And we're gonna click Start Now. And I'm gonna set up just a dummy website that I've got here, which is just one of our sample sites that we work on. And we are gonna go ahead and we're gonna add a property, okay? So I've logged in, hit this drop down, and I've clicked on add a property. Now you wanna put it into the domain name field, not in the URL prefix, that's for subdomains. We wanna set up a domain name. We're gonna paste our domain name in there, and we're gonna click continue. Now, this step here can get a little tricky to verify your ownership. I, because we have Google Analytics running on this site, and we've already verified that, we're gonna get auto verified. What it will do if you don't have that running is it will give you some verification records. Um, They are a little bit technical. They need to either be placed on your domain name's DNS host or in your website code. If you don't know how to do that, by all means, please just copy those records, send it through to supportedarrowsoftware.com. We will do our absolute best to do it for you if we have access to your domain name. If we don't, we'll point you in the right direction because we want to see everyone have this set up on their account, okay? Once you get to that point, you've got it verified, you'll come in here and you'll get this ownership verified little screen, okay? So I'm gonna skip through to that step and I'm gonna go to click on go to property, okay? And because I've just set this up literally right now, we have no data, we've got nothing coming through here, okay? That'll take some time to come through. You're not gonna see that in this video. what I really wanted to show is how easy it is to set up, particularly if you've got Google Analytics. And then the other thing I wanna show you is how we go about setting up um, a sitemap. Okay, another thing that everyone should have on their website. So I am just gonna jump back into the arrow control panel and we're gonna go into the website manager just here, okay? And then I'm actually gonna go ahead and show you how to install a sitemap, uh, generate a sitemap, sorry, first of all, and then we're gonna install it on our site so that Google picks that up and I'll explain some of the benefits of doing that, okay? First step, we need to go to XML sitemaps or xml-sitemaps.com, okay? Which we can do here. And you can see I've recently done this. All we do is we put our domain name in here and we click start. Now, depending on the size of your site, how many listings, recent sales you've got, that can take anywhere from two to 60 minutes to generate. It's basically gonna crawl your your entire website, very similar to what Google does, 
and it's going to get every single one of your pages and it's going to map it out in a, what's called a sitemap.xml file. Okay, I'm not going to generate that right now just because it will take about 15 minutes for this particular website. All right, I've actually pre-done it. So we're going to go back into the website manager here. We're pretending that we've done that already. And we're going to come down to site settings up at the top here and we're going to scroll down. You'll see there's this little sitemap field here. And that's exactly what this is for. That's for us to upload that file. Okay, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that file that I've previously generated and I'm going to click upload. And you'll see once I do that, we get our sitemap XML file in here. It's just put a little ID on the end of it. Um, that's just our own thing. Um, just to make sure that every sitemap is unique because you can upload new ones um, once you start adding a whole bunch of pages. Okay. Once we've uploaded that, we just go ahead and click on save. Now that we've done that, what we are able to do is if we go and view our website and we type forward slash sitemap.xml, that's going to take us to that sitemap. Okay. Now this particular one, I've just entered a essentially an empty sitemap. Okay, so there's no list of pages here. Just this is just to speed things up. Otherwise, the upload would have taken quite a quite a while. Okay, so we're going to copy that URL because that's our that's basically our sitemap URL. All right, and we are going to jump back into Google Search Console. We're going to click on sitemaps, and you can see we have no sitemaps in here. We're going to click on into this enter sitemap URL field and we're going to paste that URL in here that we just copied okay which is the link to our sitemap that we've just uploaded we're going to click on submit and let Google do its thing for a second and you'll see here that it says sitemap submitted successfully now it can take uh, I think up to about 24 hours for that sitemap to get crawled um, we've got an error here just because it's an empty sitemap. Yours will come up with a list of pages here and how many pages are in uh, the sitemap. So discovered pages, discovered videos, and then the process of Google crawling uh, your website and that sitemap will begin. And what that does is it basically says to Google, hey, here's every page on our website. This is everything that we want indexed into our website, uh, into Google for our website. If you don't submit a sitemap, what you're relying on is you're relying on the Google search engine um, and specifically the Google bot that crawls all of the websites on the internet. You're relying on it finding all of the pages on your website, okay? Which it can only do if you have links to all of your pages from your main pages on your website. Now, a lot of those pages are gonna get found by Google. But this just takes the guessing out of the equation and basically says, hey, Google, here's everything on the website. Please index it, okay? They're not going to index everything. There'll be some errors that come up. They'll have things like duplicate content for certain things if you've got pages that have the same stuff on them. Um, there's some things that they just won't index because they don't deem it to be valuable content or they ha there's not enough traffic to that page just yet. Uh, but this process here is an absolute must if you have a website. You, it, 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 you essentially jump the queue. You're basically going, here's all my pages. Don't just, I'm not going to just wait for Google to crawl the website. I'm actually going to send all of the pages over to them and um, they'll then take that from there and uh, yeah, crawl the website. Awesome. Uh, that is it when it comes to Search Console. Uh, what I do want to do, just one more thing. Uh, if you don't know already, we have a sister company that launched uh, last year um, and its name is Leadfleet. Now, Leadfleet specializes in full service digital marketing for real estate agents. Um, we're working with quite a few of you already uh, and uh, dozens of agencies around Australia. The reason I bring this up, other than the fact that we've got some fantastic free content in here, both in our blog and in our podcast, uh, if you're looking to get more out of your website and out of your online presence, this content's for you. It's all just tailor-made for real estate agents in Australia. That's all we deal with. That's all we talk about. We're constantly releasing value-add content. You can see right here, we've got SMS campaigns everyone should be sending. We've actually written those SMS templates for you um, to give you some ideas on things that you could send out to your sellers and buyers to hopefully get more opportunities out of your database. 
The other thing we do have as well, which is a little bit of a shameless plug, is our Digital Basics product. Now, the reason I bring this up is it's kind of created by the Lead Fleet team to give you that kickstart you need with your website. Maybe you haven't gotten around to everything that you should have. Um, you haven't written all your metadata. You haven't set up Google My Business and Search Console. This package here, we're not sitting here retiring off this. As you can see, it's only 495 bucks. We are trying to basically go, let's do this at cost to make sure as many of our clients, as many real estate agents in Australia have that bare minimum stuff in place for their website so that they can get the rankings they should have and they can start to move up in Google. This is not an ongoing SEO package where you are gonna guarantee number one rankings for your search term. That's a big job, that takes months, okay? This is just that sort of, as the name suggests, digital basics. We're just getting you started, making sure that all the all your ducks are in a row and that you've got what you should have, okay? If you're interested, you can jump on this website, um, jump on the Leaflet website, go to forward slash digital hyphen basics. Um, you can have a read of it. Uh, if you've got any questions, reach out to the Lead Fleet team. If you'd like to purchase it, click on Get Started. It will take you through the process. Uh, the Lead Fleet team will then get access to your Arrow account and they'll go through and take care of all that for you. Okay. That is it for today's masterclass. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I hope you got some valuable content out of this. As always, if you have any questions, if you get stuck, please feel free to reach out to our support team. Uh, you can give us a buzz or open a ticket by emailing support at arrowsoftware.com. We would love to help you. Um, that's what we're here to do. Make sure you're getting the most out of our tools, out of our websites, out of our software. Um, we're here to help you try and grow your business and uh, increase market share. That's our mission. So please feel free to reach out to us. Like I said, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for listening.